Hey there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well out there. I know, I am. I hope you enjoyed that video at the start of this video because that's gonna be the subject of today's lesson. Four arpeggio shapes you need to know. Well, it's actually an arpeggio pattern, uh, four arpeggio patterns that I've taken and put together. Um, but I will explain shortly. Uh, last year I put out a video entitled Five Arpeggio Shapes You Need to Know. So what I've decided to do is give you um, four arpeggio patterns that are kind of based, loosely based on that video and take them into sort of deeper territory, so to speak. So uh, hopefully that gives you a bit more of an overview of um, what I'm going to show you, okay? Um, first things first, um, we're gonna start here in essentially um, the key of G, G major, okay? That's the, um, the arpeggio that I play at the start is a G major arpeggio, but let me go into detail and show you exactly uh, what I'm playing. In the original video, the five arpeggio shapes you need to know, we did, which is a real uh, uh, common arpeggio for me. I play it all the time, perhaps a little too much. And what I usually do is a turn around at the top. You know, you'll hear me doing that all the time. Okay, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take it slightly differently. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're still gonna do um, the ninth, major ninth arpeggio, but we're gonna, instead of one note on the B string, we're gonna add two and we're gonna get this passing note here. Okay, what do we have? So it's essentially exactly the same as the previous arpeggio with an extra passing note added. And we're gonna apply that to each of our four arpeggios. Very important here that we understand um, the number of notes that we play on each string. So two, one, two, two, and then three essentially at the top. Okay, so. That's the arpeggio shape if I just play it in order, but what we're going to do is kind of turn around at the top and then continue. Okay, so that's our little pattern there, and we're going to apply that to a series of different, different chords. Um, one of the things that I've uh, chosen to show you this arpeggio for is to kind of build your finger independence, especially with the index finger. Um, I like to work on things where the index finger is challenged by doing a lot of moving around on the fretboard rather than just staying in the same position. Okay, so it's good training for the first finger. If you're not used to it, doing this kind of thing can, uh, you'll notice it, you know, you'll notice that um, it's quite challenging and you might feel it in your index finger over, you know, the course of a few days, but stick with it and uh, you know, you'll get the rewards from it. Okay, so that's our first shape, the G major. Okay, picking wise, I'm doing my usual thing of picking when ascending and then hammering on uh, from nowhere when descending. Uh, sometimes I will pick the first note on every new string though. Um, so, we've got our first shape. Now we're gonna go to the next shape, okay, which is a straight ahead. G minor, all we're gonna go do is change it from G major to G minor, very, very easy. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna keep it following a, a minor seventh arpeggio. And again, we want two notes on the B string as opposed to one, so we get. So here we get a ninth, tenth, eleventh, or ninth, third, eleventh, okay? Okay, it sounds really great against the 
against that major, it's a major to minor thing. You, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, so that's our second arpeggio shape. Then it starts to get a little bit more challenging. What we're going to play now is this. Now, what on earth is that? It's actually based around this, which is a D7 sharp 5 arpeggio. Okay, so we go from having a, a G as the root to um, moving it down a semitone lower than that, which gives us a third degree of, I'm just thinking of D7 basically, just to simplify it. Okay, so what are the notes we have? And then we get our turn around here. You might, you might need a bit of practice this to get the notes accurate. Whoops. Okay, so I'm thinking essentially of D7 here, but we've got the sharp five instead. Okay, so that one's gonna need specific practice, especially when you're going from the G minor seven shape to, to this one. So keep it nice and slow. We're in no rush. We don't need gre fast, greasy speed straight away. Just take your time. Okay, so let's move on to the next shape. We just had this. Now we're gonna move back to G, but we're gonna play G minor, and we're gonna do this arpeggio. It sounds great. Now what on earth am I doing there? I actually initially, sometimes I, I switch between doing this arpeggio and just a straight head minor major seven. But you can add the flat five in, you see. So I thought I'd show you this one. So nice and slowly. Sounds excellent, I love the sound of this. Um, so that's our four arpeggios, so we can connect them all together and uh, practice them thusly. Okay, so let's play it nice and slowly. That's our first. Usually I um, uh, loop them twice, four times, you know, you can um, do with them what you will. So minor. Okay, so those are the four shapes all together. Um, as I said before, keep them nice and steady, you know. Um, because these are slightly different to our usual sort of diatonic shapes, the one, especially the ones that I showed you in the first video, five arpeggio shapes you need to know, um, these are going to challenge you in different ways, especially, so pay attention to that index finger. So when I'm working on stuff, um, what I do is that rather than concentrate on the arpeggio as a whole, I'll concentrate on what my index finger is doing. So here, I've got a jump. So I just concentrate on where the index finger is. See? So I'm just looking at the index finger. Make sure you've got um, a visual reference there. Keep your eyes peeled on your index finger when you're doing this. So especially here, where we've got a bigger jump, we've got um, essentially an octave jump here, but it's two frets because I think I'm thinking horizontally. Uh, here rather than vertically. So we're moving up two frets. Okay, and for this one, it's less so because it's one fret. So pay attention to the to whether you're moving one fret or two frets. Um, 
and uh, you know you'll see the results. Also, when you're doing these arpeggios, because we've got extended positions, uh, you might have to lower the thumb a little bit uh, more than usual to get the shapes, to get the patterns. But it's, it's no big deal, you know. Stick with it, and uh, you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, I think this wraps up today's lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, just a little reminder, there's still a sale on at the website, my website. So I'll leave a link in the description box as always. Make sure you check out my lesson content and it's a fantastic way of supporting me. Uh, basically, so I don't get evicted from my place. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it's a great way of supporting me. Uh, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I'll catch up with you guys in the next one. Cheers.